This is Patagonia. It has the highest wind speeds outside Antarctica. It is the most southerly inhabited place in the world. The environment is hostile and unforgiving. To survive in Patagonia, you have to be extraordinary. There is such an extraordinary survivor, a bird that breeds on these remote windswept plateaus, a bird that evolved many millions of years ago as the volcanoes rose up in the Andes, a bird with a molten memory, a piercing red eye, a jewel in Patagonia's wilderness. In contrast, the first people, hunter-gatherers, arrived only 12,000 years ago. Using isolated caves for shelter, their life was hard, tough and short, seeking a small pleasure in their art. Since that time, the hand of man has never left Patagonia, hands that have affected the whole of Patagonia's landscape and its wildlife, in particular this special bird. In 2016, the International Union for the Conservation of Nature ranked this bird, the hooded grebe, as critically endangered. That's one small step away from extinction, one small step away from oblivion. But as it is a hand of man that has led to the downfall of our bird, so it is the hand of man that is working to save it. This is a story of a once forgotten bird in a once forgotten landscape. A story about those fighting for its survival. But will they succeed? It's October, springtime in Patagonia. Lali Fasola and Kinney Rosler are the leaders of the Hooded Grebe Project, the team that is fighting to save our bird. And they're just arriving at the research station for the start of a new season. The Hooded Grebe is a very beautiful bird that is really rare. We have less than 1,000 individuals. And the population had been declining for the last 25 years. We only find it in Patagonia. It's endemic from there. Nowadays, it's critical in danger. In the early years, when we just discovered that the population had dropped by 80%, we don't have a clue what was going on with the hooded grip populations. We were extremely concerned about what were the causes for that. Eventually, uh, after season after season of studying and following the grips, we start to realize that the global climate change was the worst of the threats. It was affecting all over Patagonia and it was, it was basically drying out the lakes. And there are three invasive species affecting our birds. One is the American mink, which is a very aggressive predator. Also the rainbow trout, which affect the whole lakes, changing the uh, conditions of the water. And lastly, a native species, the kelp gull, that affects the colonies, eating the chicks and the eggs. Patrick Buchanan has worked on the project for four years and coordinates the vital work done by the colony guardians. The key to our success in saving the hooded grebe is having people close to where they nest. We have people camped at the nesting grounds at the lakes of the hooded grebes. Uh, mainly watching and protecting the grebes from gulls and mink. Uh, we call these people colony guardians. These teams are camped far away from home in very remote locations in very harsh conditions, but they're still a very crucial component to save the hooded grebe. Another crucial part in the fight for the survival of our hooded grebe is the research station. This is where the hooded grebe team is based. Pedro Chiesa is in charge of ensuring its smooth operation. He has to coordinate food supplies, communications and the team's vehicles. Not an easy job when there are 20 colony guardians based here and it's three hours drive from the nearest village. Our remote location here in southern Patagonia changes everything. Ensuring the safety and well-being of everyone is vital. Every task involves long drives on some of the toughest roads in South America. And so keeping the vehicles running, it's a daily challenge for us. From the beginning of November, hooded grebes start to arrive on their breeding grounds. These high plateaus in between the Patagonian steppe 
and the Andean Mountains. There are three main plateaus, Buenos Aires, Strobel and Siberia. Together they cover thousands of square miles of flat, razor-sharp, rocky terrain, dotted with hundreds of ancient volcanic lagoons. It is on these isolated windswept lagoons that our grebes nest. Here they find an ample supply of tiny shrimp-like crustaceans. This profusion of food is generated by none other than the fierce Patagonian wind. Wind that constantly stirs up the water. The sun warms the top layer, which the wind drives to the bottom. Ideal conditions for crustaceans to grow. This is why the hooded grebes come here. And this is where Kinney, Lally and their teams search for them. Every year it's difficult to find the grebes. Their lagoons are drying out. Climate change here at the end of the world has meant less winter rain and less snow. Another dry winter, no snow. This is what you get. Dry dirt, no water, and no water, no grebes. The birds are forced to move around in search of lagoons where the water level enables the growth of the milfoil plant, essential for the birds to make their nests. Hooded grebes are highly social and will only nest when there are enough mature adults to form a small colony. And the image is pretty sad because we are not used to the, this lake with such low level of water. Actually, the amount of flamingos that you could see is not normal. It's not normal for us. Probably the grebes have seen this lake like this before. And there are no grebes. The other astonishing thing is uh, the flamingos are actually walking in the middle of the lake. And so that is telling us that the, the water is really, really low. I'm, I'm sure that the, the, the grebes have seen this, uh, this lake like this before. It's like we haven't seen it like this. <laughs> so they would find somewhere else to, to spend the, the summer. <laughs> we will need to look for them. It's a bit horrifying. <laughs> Time is short. The breeding season in Patagonia only lasts a few months. The team needs to find the grebes and their breeding colonies. Only then can they put protection in place. We just arrived to Rodriguez DCC. It's, it's a big lake that used to have a lot of grebes here. I also used to have colonies, but we didn't find any grebe at all. So we are going now looking for grebes in different lakes. It's a lake that we saw last year, there was uh, some grebes, so we just wanted to take a look, see if there were any around, but we still have quite a few lakes to take a look to that today to see what we find there. Hoping I think we're going to find those, those grebes that are missing. They should be somewhere around here. We just visited a, a lake behind the La Española Lake. Uh, we found 18 grebes. That's wonderful news, but no signs of a colony but we will keep uh, an eye on these grebes. It's early December. Lally and Kinney have now located five lagoons where they want to set up colony guardian camps. One is on the Buenos Aires Plateau, where Elliot and Juan are eager to start work. Every morning starts with a bird census. Bird sandpiper, 12. Wow, Magellanic Plover, two. I've been waiting to see one for a long time. That, that's awesome. Chilean Flamingo, 14. Hooded Grebe, 24. Whoa, Juan, they're starting to display, doing their courtship dance. Wow. <laughs>
This is a courtship frenzy, as passionate as any tango. A tango in the wind. Dancers that have captured the hearts of local communities. A few years ago, no one had heard about the hooded grief, but now everyone in the town knows about it. There is even a fantastic picture of the grip in the school. I run a wildlife group for children, and they really enjoy bird watching. We go to an urban nature reserve that the town has just created. When people understand the plight of an animal, it leads to the love that it's needed to save it. People used to think about Patagonia as a desolate place, but we have an Argentinian poet, Atahualpa Chupanqui, who said, for the ones who look without seeing, land is just land. And now the hooded grip is bringing this land to life. Uh, we believe that our relationship with the estancia owners and the people working in the estancias is one of the most valuable assets that the project has. Uh, this is mainly because the hooded grebes choose where they nest every year. And in most cases, this happens outside the boundaries of the national park. Because of this, and the relationship we have with the owners and the people working in these places, we have developed the possibility for us to enter and exit freely uh, to these private properties and also to camp there throughout the whole breeding season. Conservacionistas y cazadores, las dos cosas a la vez. Pero bueno, tratamos de mantener el equilibrio y tomar de la naturaleza nada más que lo que hace falta. Ese es el mensaje. Fortunately, these good relations with local people enable access to private land up onto the high plateaus. So that one of the worst threats to the hooded grebe, the introduced North American mink, can be dealt with. This deadly mammal travels along the rivers and streams, killing the native wildlife. They can destroy a whole colony of grebes overnight. Colony guardians camp out through the season, and at night they patrol the rivers and streams, monitoring and controlling the movements of this predatory animal. Another threat to the survival of our hooded grebe is the rainbow trout. These fish were introduced from North America to many lagoons during the 1980s, where, without their predators, they grow to eat giant proportions, competing directly with our grebes for food. They also change the nature of the water, killing off the native milfoil plant, essential for our grebes. Colony guardian Andres is working on an exciting new project to remove the rainbow trout from a lake high up on the Strobel Plateau. The Islote Lake in Strobel Plateau is a very, very important lake for the conservation of the hooded grebe. In 1990s, there were 1,000 of hooded grebes, more grebes than we have in the present, in the entire world. We are removing the trouts for this lake to get the conditions that were in the 1990s. If the climate change progress, and uh, we remove the trout from the Slotte Lake, while the, most of the small lagoons are drying up, Maybe in 15 years or 20 years, the Islote Lake will be one of the few places for a hooded grip to survive. It's not just on the breeding ground that our hooded grebe faces challenges. This is the Santa Cruz River. And this river is the last wild and truly untamed river in the whole of Patagonia. And this river plays an important role in the life of our bird. The hooded grebe winters on the Atlantic coast, in particular on the estuary of the Santa Cruz, where this wild river brings down nutrient-rich sediments from glaciers high up in the Andes, food for a vast array of marine life. In spring, our hooded grebe uses the river valley as a roadmap to migrate back up to the high plateaus to breed. But Patagonia's last untamed river and the wildlife it supports are threatened. Two huge mega dams are planned. This threat to the river is an added threat to our bird. Hundreds of kilometres of river valley will be drowned. The flow of the river will be severely disrupted, 
even completely halted for a few years. Will the nutrient-rich sediments still reach the estuary? Will there be enough food for our bird in the winter? Will our hooded grebe be able to find its way back to its summer home? Nobody knows. Bobby and Caitlin are colony guardians and they are here to protect and monitor the hooded grebes on their lagoon. This is their second season as colony guardians. So what brings them back to this wild and windswept part of Patagonia? I think it, you could sum it up in two things. The first thing might be obvious it's, is the solitude. Up here it's a harsh environment. There's, aside from a few hardy ranchers, there's, there's nothing up here and the elements are harsh. You're getting battered by winds 24 hours a day and you're sharing that experience with the birds, with the, the creatures you're here to study and to support and protect. And uh, there's something about that, sharing that experience with, with them that is unique and, and really sort of digs into your heart. The second thing, which, which uh, might not be as obvious, is the people. You know, the people of this project are amazing. To be on this harsh plateau, uh, freezing our asses off, you know? And, and, and yeah, it's just, it's amazing to be a part of a project that's basically running on passion and ingenuity. When you work here, you really have to get involved with the wind because the wind is so strong and it is on for so many hours on the day that if you try to fight it, he will win and it will destroy you and it will get impossible for you to work. So you finally, you have to get even friends with the wind and you have to embrace him because if you don't, it's impossible to work. It's now early January, midsummer in Patagonia. Greaves have been seen on a remote lagoon on the Strobel Plateau. Bobby and Caitlin are sent to investigate. And as they come over the crater rim, they are delighted. The Greaves are forming a colony and starting to nest. Wow, this is crazy. This is <laughs> chaos out there in the nest colony. Wow. Some of the adults are putting milfoil onto the nest platforms. You see they're kind of climbing up on the nest and testing it, but there's still a lot of water in the bottom. Yeah, they got a lot of building left to do. Yeah. It's all kinds of squabbling. It's just a constant cacophony from the birds, just moving around, squawking at each other. It would help if they didn't put their nests right next to each other, don't you think? Yeah, they're so close. <laughs> Oh look, and there's an egg on nest one. Wow, Sweet. that's so fast. Yeah. Saving the hooded grebe cannot be left to the birds themselves. With a population of less than 800 individual birds, they need all the scientific, technical and dedicated help possible. So, in addition to the concept of colony guardians, a breeding programme has been set up. This is situated on the isolated Strobel Plateau, adjacent to a fishing lodge belonging to the Estancia Laguna Verde. Managing this important part of the Hooded Grebe project is vet Gabby Gabarain. On January the 15th, the first eight eggs were collected. There was no time to lose, as the journey to the breeding centre would take eight hours. Distances over the plateau are huge. The roads are bumpy and the eggs are so precious. And Maria, how do you like your eggs? Not scrambled. <laughs> so as soon as they reach the breeding centre, Gabby assesses their condition and places them in an incubator. From now on, the temperature and humidity around the eggs and the data on the development are monitored throughout the day and night. It's moving and it, you can hear a little peek, peek. 
Uh, yeah, I, I'm waiting. I think uh, it's going to hatch uh, tomorrow or past tomorrow, but uh, we don't know. I, I just have to wait. The people in my life often ask me, why is it important to help save the hooded grebe? I personally think it's because we are unable to foresee how its extinction will affect the environment. However, there are many other reasons as well. Because they are unique and I love them. Porque quedan muy pocos ejemplares y es muy, muy hermoso. Because it's a, it's a great species and we need to conserve biodiversity worldwide. La naturaleza somos nosotros, la naturaleza somos todos. Si no lo conservamos nosotros, ¿quién lo va a conservar? Because it's our responsibility. Bueno, es importante porque es parte fundamental de la biodiversidad de nuestra Patagonia. Because it's a beautiful bird and unique. Back at the breeding center, there's good news for the survival of our unique bird. Bueno, <laughs> <laughs> empezó la catombe. <laughs> Hola. Hola, bebé. Hola, bebé. Todos los días tenemos que conseguir 5.000 anfípodos para cada pichón. Es una tarea realmente difícil. Some more good news for our bird is the creation of the Patagonia National Park. Guido Vitoni played a vital role in its development. Patagonia National Park is a huge project stretching from Cueva de las Manos, known for its rock art and a UNESCO World Heritage Site, to the west, to the Baker River in Chile. It was kick-started by the intention to do something to safeguard the hooded grebe breeding areas on the plateau of the Lake Buenos Aires, as we call it, the, uh, the big uh, volcanic plateau just south of this biggest lake in, in Patagonia. This is one of the few plateaus that was preserved from the introduction of trout, so it was uh, vital that this plateau had at least some lagoons, breeding lagoons, uh, under protection. This new Patagonia National Park in Argentina protects a wide variety of habitats. The isolation and exposed elevation of the plateaus make it a special place. Home not just to the hooded grebe, but to a community of unique plants and animals, each dependent on one another. But it is the stately long-necked guanaco that reigns supreme on these windy tops. Fences can be fatal for them, so an important task for the National Park Wardens is their removal allowing free movement of wildlife across the entire landscape. <laughs> this guanaco has had a lucky escape. It's the end of February. The breeding season is drawing to a close. Nights are getting colder. There are no more tangos in the wind and the commotion and squabbling of nesting is over. The lagoon is quiet. The adult grebes are busy feeding their young. They need to work quickly. These lagoons will soon freeze over and the young need to be fit enough to migrate down to the coast for winter. Now at a colony on a Buenos Aires plateau, Bobby and Caitlin are keeping a close eye on the chicks. This is a critical time. These young chicks make a tasty meal for gulls, peregrine falcons, and mink. Oh, this looks like it's gonna be a great colony. Just quick scan, I'm getting about 50 adults. Looks like most of them are paired up and quite a few chicks out there being fed. Looks like it's been pretty successful so far. Okay, here's a foraging adult. It just popped up out of the milfoil. Here it goes, now it's gonna feed the chick. Nice. Oh, whoa, whoa, there's two chicks, two chicks on the back. Wow. If you look really closely through the scope, you can see this little morsel. It's a tiny shrimp that the adult mm. is feeding the chick, mm -hmm. which had just spent 45 seconds swimming around in a forest of milfoil to find. Mm -hmm. And it does this over and over and over all day long. 
the parents switching off and on. That's the, that's the dedication of these parents that will hopefully ensure the survival of the chicks and the species. It's yeah, incredible. So will the hooded grebe survive? Are the hands working on its behalf succeeding? It seems that the passion and ingenuity of this determined and dedicated team is paying off. The hooded grebe decline has been halted, though its long-term future still lies in the balance. Following the wind, this beautiful bird makes its home on remote lagoons in the shadow of the Andes. And there, in the undisturbed beauty of Patagonia, it now faces its greatest challenge, climate change. Our bird can adapt to change. It has done through millennia. But climate change is happening too fast. Though now our bird has new friends to help it in its fight for survival. Lally, Kinney and their team. And of course, the wind. You can make the wind your friend in Patagonia. Hooded grebes have. They dance to its tune. 